Hello YouTube, Goddard Radio Moscow here again with another beer review for you as is usual. We're continuing on with the series of Scottish beer reviews that I've been doing for you. So this is the, I think, number 15 in the Scottish beer reviews series, the Scottish Beer Month. And for this one we are going to head up to the northeast of Scotland once again. We're going to go to a town called Keith, which is to the north of the city of Aberdeen in Banffshire. So here we are going to go to the Spey Valley Brewery who describe themselves as a nano brewery, the only brewery I've ever encountered countered to actually describe themselves as that and we're going to have a taste of their Stillman's IPA and the name for this will become obvious as I take you through the brewery history. So as is usual with my beer reviews then I will take you through that brewery history that I was talking about. If you just want to go to the tasting just feel free to fast forward a few minutes and you will get straight there. The brewery website is in the video description for you below along with a link to my reviews that I will hopefully add in the future from the Spey Valley Brewery. So anyway, this brewery is run by a guy called David MacDonald who is originally from Gourock on the southwest coast of Scotland and he's a chemical engineer by trade and a graduate of the Heriot Watt Brewing and Distilling Programme. He spent many years as a distiller actually and originally they wanted to call the brewery Speyside Brewery but the name was actually already taken by another brewery when it was founded back in 2007 although that brewery folded after a few months of this brewery being in existence and never actually brewed a drop of beer so they maybe could have had that name if they wanted but they describe themselves as a nano brewery and they only produce 18 gallons of beer per brew which are actually left to ferment for a week and then they're matured in casks for over a month. But David apparently does all the work for the brewery during his time off from the Rose Isle distillery which is owned by Diageo, one of the big companies that own many of the distilleries around Scotland in fact. But the brewery is located on the Mulburn farm which is owned by his business partner Ennis McPherson and he has two very very good water sources for brewing from the Mulburn and and at the Mulburn and that is the Mulburn and the Shanston Springs and apparently he experimented a lot with the with the water trying to change it for each different brew he did but he found that the beer tasted kind of uh, good regardless of whether or not you played around with the water so he decided just to let nature run its course which is probably quite a good decision we've got very good water here in Scotland but they source most of their malts as well locally and the brewery pretty much works out of a huge shed within the farm so a very very small operation as you can guess but the main output for this brewery is the mash Tun pub in Aberlour whose owners have actually been very supportive of the brewery and they've helped David learn a lot about the kind of real ale dispensing and all of that kind of thing with actually casking beer and stuff like that but the beer's also been moved around by Camera Scotland to various different beer festivals and it is really starting to gain a name for itself so within the next 10 years or so hopefully those of you watching outside of Scotland might have some idea about this beer but those of us within Scotland it even is quite a rare one for us just now so it's quite a cool review to be doing for you at the moment. Just to list a few of the other beers you can get from the uh, from this brewery, you get the Spaced Out, David's Not So Bitter, Royston's Happy Handful the St and also the Stillman's IPA and they have had a few special edition beers as well. So as I'm sure you can tell just from that history, the beer is called the Stillman's IPA because David uh, McDonald is a is a distiller by trade so quite a cool, way, cool name to name his, one of his beers and I'm sure it's meant to be a very good one. So just to tell you a little bit about this beer itself before we get on to the tasting here, it's a 4.6% IPA and it uses Sats hops and it's originally brewed as an experimental beer and it proved very very hot very very sort of popular amongst the the people in the Aberlour pub so he decided to make it one of his regular brews so let me just bring up the camera and you can have a quick little look at the uh, the artwork on this one see if I can get the camera to come up here you are so it's quite simply presented actually but it's very very nice I think it's quite simple yet quite classy at the same time as you can see on the back of the bottle he's got Facebook Twitter and uh, I'm not sure what the other one's meant to be but you can see you can pick up if you type in this brewery's name on Facebook and Twitter you will find them there I'll maybe put the Facebook link for you in the video description there and you can see Stillman's IPA brewed in the heart of Speyside Scotland a very famous whiskey region Speyside I should point out there but as you can see a very very nice looking beer just a plain bottle cap on this one too so let's get this guy out and get on with the tasting as I mentioned a 4.6% IPA brewed with Sats hops which I believe are from Germany and Austria Austria. So as you can see, a nice little smoky opening there. We'll get this guy out. Should get a nice pour out of this one. As with one of my previous videos, one of the, the head on this beer just went absolutely mental, so you need to watch that sometimes with some of your beer reviews that you do. I'll just leave a little bit out just now so we can have a little look 
at the uh, at the beer quite easily and also we can swiggle swiggle it around and have a wee look at the aroma as well just bring up the light and let you have a little look at this one here it's kind of poured a nice really dark caramelly amber as you can see uh, if I put my fingers behind it, it is a little bit transparent, but mainly a kind of opaque orangey amber colour. This one, just see if I can bring that right up and let you see. It's quite, it is uh, quite a bit brighter, I think, than you're seeing it on the camera. But it's a nice orangey amber, slightly opaque, a good bit of carbonation visible in there, and a kind of quite white, frothy head there. Maybe slightly off white, more creamy, but a nice looking head on top of it there. And it is very, very nice actually. Really nice looking beer. In terms of the aroma, I'll just put that light back down so you can see it again properly. Nice kind of sweet malts again on this one. A kind of quite biscuity malt, I would say. A nice it's almost like it's got a nice kind of toasted bread aroma to it. Some nice caramel malts. Slightly nutty character to it as well, but it's got a nice, it's got a nice, quite sweet caramel malt to it. Nice, it almost has a little bit of a biscuity, toasted, bready malt, I would say. But it's got a nice kind of earthy and herbal character coming out, and that's actually quite typical of the Sats hops, if I remember rightly. You've got that nice, kind of typical, earthy and kind of sort of earthy, spicy flavour coming out or aroma coming out of this one. Nice. Really nice, you can definitely pick up what it says about it having a typical Sats hop aroma. Really, really nice kind of smell in beer. So let's get the rest of this out and see how we get on here. The head on this one, of course, is just fading away to a very, very thin layer. I'll just make sure my camera isn't going to play up while I make the rest of this video because it's done that a few times and it's been very annoying. So let's get on with the tasting of this beer. Now it seems to be okay. You can see, very attractive looking beer. So this is my very first taste of one of the beers from the Spey Valley Brewery, a nano brewery, the only one I've encountered that, is, that has uh, described itself as such. So here we go. Cheers. Yeah, very interesting one this, you can definitely pick out, even just on first taste, you can pick out the different components that you would expect from the Sats hops. I do wonder if this is simply a single hop beer, this one, I'd be interested to know that. It doesn't actually tell you too much about the profile of this beer on the website, so if, they're watch if you guys are watching at the Spey Valley Brewery, please do that to your website. And the flavour of this one, you've got a nice toasted bready malt in this one. Only slightly toasted actually, mainly a big kind of nice white bready malt in there, but it's got quite a bitter hop edge to it in there. On the very first taste that you'll get of this beer, you will notice it comes in with a big hoppy, uh, a nice big earthy kind of spicy hop character comes out on this one. It's quite herbal at the same time. The herbal character comes out a little bit more in the aftertaste, which is quite interesting. But yeah, it's a really, really interesting beer, this one, I think. The, the Satz hop is one that you find quite often used in Germany and it gives it does give some of the darker beers a really nice kind of complex in flavour so it's quite an interesting one to see in one of the more in a beer that's intended to be quite a bit lighter than that actually but yeah we've got a nice kind of sweet flat white bready flavour kind of coming across the back of the tongue here slightly toasted and there is a bit of caramel sweetness in there but around the edges of the tongue you're definitely getting that nice kind of bitter spicy character that you expect of the uh, of the kind of sats hop it's got a good bit of earthiness to it as well which you can it starts to merge at the back sides of the tongue and has a little it starts to merge in with that and you're getting this kind of almost cereal spice flavour out of it. It's really interesting this actually. I do I can appre I do appreciate the Sats hop from my time living in Germany. So it's one this is one that if you're not used to the Sats hop you'll need to do a little bit of getting used to in my opinion. But it's a very, very nice beer actually. The caramel sweetness I think does build just a little bit as you take a few more sips of the beer you do feel it at the back of the tongue and it just gets gradually sweeter as your mouth sort of adjusts to the flavour of this one. Initially it does come in with that big earthy and spicy feel 
that goes around the back edges of the tongue there but it's definitely one that you need to kind of build yourself into a little bit and just allow yourself to get used to the flavour I think but it's, it's done very very well I think the flavours in it blend very well together in my opinion yeah you do you definitely feel that caramel building up to be just a little bit more sweet as you take a few more gulps of this beer in terms of the mouthfeel of this one it's definitely mid-bodied the carbonation is quite fine but it does help bring out a little bit of the kind of the, the hoppy character a little bit it helps bring out that kind of earthy character that you expect to the sats hop and it helps it actually helps bring out that kind of cereally feel to it as well it's, it's a very interesting beer as i say the sats hop it's a really interesting kind of complex in hop as i would describe it that goes into a lot of german beers particularly the darker ones so it is really interesting to see this in an ipa which is designed to be a lighter beer this beer is i should point that out as well i would say if i was to describe this beer as a paleo it's definitely an english paleo rather than an american paleo don't go in and expect something that's very fruity and very hoppy this is more of a spicy kind of aromatic -y, earthy character to this IPA. It does have a little bit of the caramel flavour that you would expect and a little bit of the breadiness. The malt base is as you would expect but the more it's more of an English paleo than an American paleo this one if you do get the chance to try it. But it's got quite a bit of dry character at the end I would say of this one as well. A good bit of dry and bitter character then you get that lingering earthiness to it. Very very interesting beer this one. So yeah I hope you've, I hope you've enjoyed this review. I would recommend that if you do get the chance you give this guy a try. Probably those of you watching within Scotland may get the chance to try it at some point. You probably will see one of their beers appear in one of the next sort of Aldi beer festival things that they do. This is where I got this one and it's a very good opportunity actually to kind of uh, get a hold of the different Scotland Scottish beers and review them for you so hopefully when I get back to Scotland from Australia I will be able to do that for you again I've been enjoying doing this Scottish beer month so far and I hope you're enjoying the series of beer reviews let me know in the comment section below if you do happen to have tried this beer yourself always interesting to hear other people's thoughts on the beers but please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff and I will catch you soon with more reviews I will be doing quite a number of Australian beers when I do reach Australia cheers